You see, there's people who really play music, and then there's people who just sort of pretend to play music. And uh, it's not their fault. Most people just pretend to play music because they never had anybody really point out to them what the simple difference is. So that's what we're about to find out. What do you have to do to be a real player? Well, there's two things. Well, there's a lot of things you could say, but um, I'm sure one thing you'll agree on is that if you're going to be a real player, first thing you've got to do is you've got to be able to get to the end of the song. People go, huh? But uh, do you have any idea how rampant a problem that is in the way most people approach uh, their musical instrument, particularly now in the riff-oriented rock and roll world? Um, everybody is, seems to be, for a while anyway, just content to play little bits and pieces of things. I isn't the uh, classic of all times the intro to Stairway to Heaven? I mean, how many times have people walked up to you and said, oh, I know how to play Stairway to Heaven? And then they all, all they do is play that the first 20 seconds of that, that little kind of delicate part of the song like that. And uh, my question is, in any kind of real sense at all, what good is that ever going to do you uh, to actually learn little bits and pieces of songs? In the riff-oriented rock and roll world, we have things going on like this. For example, how many times has somebody walked up to you and said, oh, I know how to play Come As You Are by Nirvana, and they go like this. And then 20 minutes later, they're still sitting there going like this. And they're going, see, I know how to play Come As You Are by Nirvana. And I'm going like, well, that's one part of Come As You Are by Nirvana. But what about the part that goes, enemy, enemy. And what about the part that goes, and I swear I don't have a gun. And the truth is, if you want to claim that you can actually play this song, you've got to know how many times to do this have a gun before you go back to this again. And then you've got to know how many times to do this before you go back to the verse again. And, and you know what I mean? And, and the truth is, if you ever want to be in a band, you've got to start at the beginning of that song and you've got to get to the you've got to get all the way to the end um, I always say real artists produce real works of art you don't walk into art galleries and see paintings on the wall that are only half finished you know what I mean but it seems to be a lot of people just never get that message and they just play little riffs and little pieces of things till they're 25 years old going gee how come this music stuff never turned out to be as much fun as I thought it was how, how come I never got in a band the, uh, if you show up for the audition to be in a band, they're not going to care how many riffs you can play. They want to know how many songs you can play. So don't make that mistake. Uh, a musician is only as good as their song list. Um, and what you need to be able to do is play that song from the beginning to the end, and then you're a real player. But that's actually only the first thing. Now, another related subject to this is if you're going to commit to getting to the end of the song, another thing you've got to make sure you do is you've got to choose doable material. Another rampant problem in the way people pursue music, as you may know, is they insist on playing music that's so far over their heads that they don't have any chance at all of being able to play the whole tune. In, in a sense, uh, back to Stairway Heaven, in, to Heaven Again, it's the classic example. That's like a nine minute long song, you know what I mean? And it's got four or five different sections and, um, you know, you'd be nuts to try to play the uh, to play Stairway to Heaven until after you'd played the guitar for at least a year or a year and a half or maybe with a lot of people it'd be like two years. People go, really? And and I can't tell you how many times I've had students come in first day in the door and I go, so what do you want to play? And they go, Stairway to Heaven. And I wind up going to them, like forget it. You know what I mean? It's like it ain't gonna happen for quite a while. I mean, it, it, and particularly when we get down here to the six main areas of music, you'll see that, uh, that there's certain criterion that you have to actually satisfy to really claim that you're actually playing um, the tune. And uh, most people just simply don't get to the level where they they have that what I call musical maturity till at least after a year or two. 
what you want to do when you're picking material is you want to try to pick stuff that's just not so far over your head that you can't do it. Like, uh, how about Metallica? How about heavy metal? How about Slayer and thrash metal and stuff like that? Might be your favorite style of music, but you're not going to be able to play that without a lot of work. And, uh, and like I say, you'll see more about this criterion that we're talking about in a couple of minutes here. So get to the end of the song and do that by choosing doable material. That's the first thing you've got to do to be a real player. But now we said that there's actually two things you've got to do to be a real player. What's the second thing? Well, I'm sure you'll agree, like anything in life, but, but, but particularly in art, the only way you ever make any progress at something is by being capable of analyzing where your deficiencies are. How do you learn but to figure out what you're doing wrong and then start work, working on fixing it? And so I always say the first thing you've got to do to be a real player is get to the end of the song. Second thing is this. Once you've gotten there, stop for a moment and ask yourself, gee, How did I do? You want to stop and check yourself out each time. And um, uh, I, I don't think any of my friends ever did that. For some reason, I seem to be the only one who ever did that. We'd get to the end of the song back in the garage bands I was in in high school and stuff, and, and uh, everyone would want to go bludgeoning right into the next tune. I was the, always the one going, no, 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 wait a minute, let, let's stop for a minute. That section in the middle there, you know, we were really ragged. We better go back over that again. We were falling behind the beat. Uh, we wound up playing some wrong notes and some stuff in there. So let's, let's get in there and work on that. And, and um, you pretty much have to do that. I, the only way you can make any progress is by analyzing where your problems are. And, for example, one of the best things you can do for your musical career is try to figure out some way to record yourself whenever you sit down to play, whenever you sit down to practice. When you're done playing and you're putting the guitar away, or maybe you're in the kitchen washing the dishes or something like that, roll that tape back and, and play it and listen to it. Listen to it like it's somebody else. Listen to it like it wasn't you playing. We can be awfully critical of other people, can't we? But to be an artist, you have to learn to be that critical of yourself. Uh, you need to get outside of your own ego and be able to listen to your playing. It's, and it's a real eye-opening experience for some people. They, for the first time, because you know sometimes when you're playing the instrument, you're, you're thinking about your fingers and stuff like that. The, the, you're not really 100% cognizant of the actual sound that you're putting out. Isn't that strange? Range to suggest, but it's absolutely true. And uh, the tape provides you with a way of now all you get to listen to is, is what you actually really played and what you sounded like. Uh, I've had some students, they come in and I tell them that and they turn white as a ghost and they go, I don't want to do that. And I, I kind of see why that is. It's uh, secretly, they know they're not really doing too well, but they just haven't wanted to face it before then. But, I mean, you got to. you got to be realistic about what you're doing. you got to face the music, as they say. And uh, that's just kind of the way it goes. Hi, I'm Scotty West, creator of the Absolutely Understand Guitar Video Home Study Program. Hey, thanks for all the positive feedback on our video guitar lessons. We're now uploading new lessons right from our DVD home study program. Each lesson is 70 minutes long, but we've chopped them up into 10-minute chapters to fit on YouTube, so each lesson will have seven chapters. It's critical that you watch these chapters in order. Make sure you start with Lesson 1, Chapter 1, then move to Lesson 1, Chapter 2, etc. When you've finished all the chapters for Lesson 1, then move on to Lesson 2. Hey, some of this stuff you might already know, and some of it's a little dry. You're going to wonder, do I really need to know this stuff? The answer is yes. Each one of these chapters contains little gems of information that nobody's told you yet, and these are the missing pieces that are preventing you from seeing the big picture. Don't cheat yourself out of these valuable realizations. Stick with the program. Also, consider our complete DVD home study program. Our high-resolution DVD video is much better than these fuzzy little YouTube clips, and you'll also get all our cool printed material, too. So good luck with your music and enjoy the lessons.